All right. So, hey, everybody. My name is Andrew McCoy, or as everyone affectionately calls me, Moose. Uh, it's an old nickname going back to my time in the Marine. So definitely a story to uh, chat about uh, at a different time when hopefully we can uh, get together in person. So in the meantime, uh, I'm the latest one here at GitHub to join us on uh, doing some Twitch streams. So as we're going through it, um, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to uh, click the link. Uh, I think it's, let me see if I can get that right, somewhere in the lower left corner of the panel here. Um, and go ahead and reach out and our, someone from our uh, great sales team, which um, one of our pre-sales technical folks uh, will be able to help you out. So what we're, what we're going to do today and what I'm going to walk folks through is one of my favorite types of demos. Um, it's the demo that I've been doing for a number of years at this point. Um, and it really goes back to one of the, the marquee um, things in recent history that uh, called open source uh, dependency management and security to the forefront in a lot of folks' minds. So um, where I'm gonna start here is I have a public GitHub repository. Um, folks that wanna follow along at home, you can go ahead and uh, go to github.com slash octodemo moose depend about Twitch and go ahead and fork the repository. So it's a basic uh, repository based off of the Struts2 Showcase app, which is a free and open source, commonly used framework. Uh, Struts, there's many products, middleware, all over the ecosystem based on this framework for, for a number of years at this point, as well as um, continuing uh, to be built and maintained for the foreseeable future. So I've, I've always liked to use it because it, it maintains relevancy to, to a lot of the clients that I talk to. And for folks that might be following along at home, this whether you're a JavaScript developer, came out of Java, um, just these common types of frameworks are uh, something that you could uh, potentially reuse and uh, talk to your folks uh, internally if you're looking to start up a security initiative. So that's why I like you uh, to talk about this demo um, and really how it's, it's uh, really easy to replicate um, and tells a really great story around that. So as you can see here, I have it all pre-wired pre and configured. Let's see, following. All right, good. We're good with chat for now. It's my first time streaming, so definitely a noob at this one. So I'm going to settle in and uh, show you guys some cool stuff, folks, some cool stuff today. So this is originally done on the uh, an old exploit going back to the uh, the Struts uh, CVE. Uh, working, I want to work with our GitHub security team here to to update this and and make some more relevant demos. So maybe I'll be back on here in a couple months with some new new and exploit uh, new and exciting ones uh, from the GitHub security lab. But for now, we're going to use one uh, that I'm familiar with here. So what you're going to want to do is I have this uh, already cloned here uh, locally. So I'm going to walk you through what we're seeing here on GitHub. So as you can see here, we have the security tab. We got to make sure you go ahead and enable these things first. I've gone and uh, done this ahead of time, but on the settings and security and analysis, you can go ahead and enable your depend about alerts and depend about security updates. These are great uh, functionality that's included uh, with all your public repositories and a lot of the, um, the private repositories that you may or may not be using. If you have more information kind of around using these things at scale across multiple teams, you can definitely uh, reach out and uh, my, someone great like myself or uh, my colleague, Kevin, who you've seen on here a couple times, uh, can, can dive deeper with you as well. So on the security overview, you have many things you can do here. Uh, you may have read about setting up a security policy. So if you're an open source maintainer, go ahead and communicate to the world how you want folks to report security vulnerabilities. Um, whether you're, you're leveraging the great um, functionality to publish the CVE uh, by us at GitHub, or you can go ahead and uh, maintain it privately. But it allows your developers uh, and security researchers to, to re communicate with you in the most effective manner. Um, security advisories, this is where if you're gonna go ahead and create your own uh, open source uh, vulnerability on your project, you can start this draft advisory right here from that security tab. Note this is here because I'm working on a public uh, repository today. Zoom in a little. All right, thank you. Okay, I can play around with the screens a little bit here. There we go. Make that a little bit bigger while I'm going through this. And then going down here to the depend about alerts, this is where we're going to be focusing in on today. Um, 
So I already have, uh, these are being uh, brought up as part of kind of scanning through the open source repository um, and the code and the POM XML in here. And as you can see, we're, we're using stretch two core, as I've already mentioned, common framework. And we're, we're being given a quick little remediation here. And we already have a pre-existing uh, pull request. So more to come around that and I can show you how effective that's gonna be for us. But as you can see here, this thing's riddled with vulnerabilities, not something we wanna use, but let's go ahead and see how vulnerable it really is. So if I switch gears to here, let's see, zoom in on this one for folks. Is this good? All right. So as you can see here, get show. I have this repository um, already cloned down here. And let's take a look at the POM XML to make sure my live demo goes as expected. So you always want to, when you're doing these types of demos, you always want to make sure that things are expected. So I'm starting off where I want to here on the stretch version 10. So now if I go ahead and pull up the commands I had from before, so we're going to go ahead and do a MVNW clean package. This is going to go ahead and use the Maven wrapper, which I've uh, pre-canned in this repository for folks at home that want to use it. Um, it. It allows you to build it without necessarily having to have all the Maven overhead installed on your local machine. Um, then you can go ahead and run a Docker build. Um, I'm tagging this one as HackMe, and then the, the period for the local uh, Docker file. And then I am also, it's off screen right now. You can see here, we're gonna do a Docker run, um, and then we're gonna be running it on port 9080, and then we're gonna be uh, running the image that we just built. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. And we can see I'm, I'm skipping, I already have everything pre-cached because I've been testing this, so everyone uh, can save seeing all the downloads that Maven and Java like to do every time you build something for the first time. All right, so the build, sent, build went through successfully. Now it's kicked over to building the Docker image. Uh-oh. And it looks like uh, the port has been already allocated. So let's go ahead and look at my Docker. Yep, I already ran it from earlier. So let's go ahead and live demos are always fun, aren't they? This is why we do this on Twitch nowadays. So you can see us doing it all our glory. All right, so now I just need to do the Docker run, which I'm forget. You know, also we're now getting to see me forget how to use a, my keyboard commands live. So let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and Docker run. Now my mouse doesn't want to work. All right, let's settle in here and hacking. All right, so now that we've started that one up, we can now go to local host port 8080, and we're running something on Nginx here. And orders three should be what we need to hit. All right, so now we can see we actually have this application. It's running, we can create a new order. Let's say Mona wants to buy 500 of our widgets here. And we have a new order created successfully from Mona. Yay. All right. So let's see how, how dangerous this uh, exploit really can be. Any questions here? All right. Looks like we're good, doing good. Let's see. History. And now I'm going to want to look for my Python commands I've run in the past. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this one to start for folks. Those following along at home can kind of see where this is going eventually. So let's go ahead and hit the right port this time. All right, so what I just do there, if I go back, so the exploit that I referenced here, it's a Python script that we're going ahead and um, passing in the, the command into it. So I can pull this up. So a good demo is nothing without some proof. So as you can see here, we are passing in a command to the, to the exploit here, which builds up the, the payload header and sends that across, which when we're executing the command, we embed the command we wanna run right here. 
So I just ran a simple LSLA. So I'm coming in and it looks like I'm in some sort of home, some sort of directory like that. Well, let's see what else we can do. Could I do a who am I? See what user I am? Can I do that on the right port again? There we go. Uh oh. Looks like we're running this one as root. That's uh, not really a good thing to happen. So let's see. If we're root, we could probably do LSLA of Etsy. Look at, we can poke around in here. Well, let's just kind of cut to the chase. What else could we do? We could RM, RF. Let's see. Does it, any suggestions on anybody want to run a specific command in chat? Well, I have it open. Give folks a minute or two. Okay. Let's see if I could do kill off root. Oh, looks like we have to override a fail safe. Well, there's maybe, maybe it'll let us do this. Uh oh, that doesn't look good. So let's go back in and uh oh, something's not found. Now if I come over here, my website, my uh, application is now crashed. So I remote was able to show a remote code execution. I could have gone on there, begin um, executing scripts. At the end of the day, I want to kill the service, and so I just simply was able to kind of remove the root underneath it. Uh, very simple at the end of the day, but. Um, achieving the goal of showing at the end of the day how dangerous this can be um, if you're not managing your open source dependencies properly. So let's go ahead uh, back up here. Let's take a look at this pull request. So this pull request, as I, as I highlighted before, it's an automated pull request fix. So this is one uh, generated once you enable that uh, depend about security updates. And we go ahead and you can see, you know, see a full diff of the compare view here looking at what's being changed. Um, that's actually some of the code from the struts commits, excuse me. So we're giving you some of the, the view into the open source view um, of what changed on the open source project. And then also, you know, bumping the pom.xml for your, for your project. And very simple demo repository, building this out over time, it'd be nice to include some CI checks in here. Um, that will really, so as you're, as a developer, these PRs come in, your CI process runs, maybe you, you run some, uh, uh, regression testing against it. That way you're able to, as, as you've seen in other, uh, uh demos around this, you're able to kind of really merge this down pretty quickly after you've done some uh, validation there. All right. So I went ahead and merged that in and accepted it. And let's just go ahead and do see that that changes here before we go ahead and pull it locally. And yep, we can see here we're at the right version there. All right. So back over here to the terminal. So we're going to go ahead and clear the terminal. And let's see. We're going to want to rebuild this. Go back up. Except I'm going to name this one fixed me. So it's a little different. E. Build, run, run, port 80. Let's go ahead and make sure we have nothing running on port 9080. We're going to kill that one off anyway. All right. Let's go ahead and rebuild this. I forgot something. All good demos, right? I don't think I pulled down my changes. There we go. I was just going to be able to, I was going to re-exploit the same thing again. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure you pull down those changes when you're doing this locally. Um, let's see. And we're going to go ahead and have it rebuilt as we talked about before. And I'm just checking in on chat to see how folks, thank you very much. Uh, my colleague Kevin is there. Uh, for all your immediate questions and concerns. And we have something running on port 90 already. Uh, looks like the other build got kicked off. So we're gonna go ahead and as I did before, 
just go ahead and we're going to run just do the Docker run on this one to make sure we're running the right container. So as you can see here, now we're running again, and let's go ahead and validate that this is local host 9080 orders three. And let's go ahead and make that Mona order again. Mona wants 501 this time. And go ahead and submit that. And now my application doesn't want to work this time. Maybe it's at 501. Yeah, um, great live demo. So Mona doesn't get an order this time. But as part of this testing process, let's go ahead and see if our exploit's fixed. Well, that didn't work because we're running on the wrong port. One of these days I'll get the ports right. All right, and that's that's the that is the expected response when when the exploit is not working here. So uh, you're just getting essentially the HTML uh, return to you. Um, it was patched, but unfortunately, as you just saw when I went ahead to create this order, as with all good things, it looks like we have some regression testing to do. Yep. So. As with all things with software, we're gonna go ahead and then now uh, create a ticket and go ahead and get that bug fixed. But maybe that's something we can tune in on a different stream. Um, let me go ahead and switch over here to see if we have any uh, questions. Now someone met me a while back in DFW. Interesting, good to see you again, sir. Small world. Yeah, I do run in. And in the roles, uh, we do travel around a lot, so. Ah. Oh, Swami, I think, it, yeah, hey, Swami, good to see you. So, awesome. Any questions here? I can hang out for a couple minutes, but I don't, I don't need to sit here and if, if anybody has, how long, got one coming up. Looks like. How long should, would someone get back to you? Reach out to us, someone should be, we have a decent sized team over here, so someone should be able to reach out to you pretty quickly there. I believe AJ still has, I can't see the stream. Uh, I believe it should be down there in the lower left hand corner here. But any questions regarding the demo, um, depend about things along those lines, I'll hang out for a minute or two, but I just wanted to jump on here give you folks uh, a quick example that you could uh, take home, replicate, play with. Um, and uh, hopefully I'm gonna be back here. I'm definitely gonna work on some other ones. If there's any requests of other ex uh, potential uh, security exploits, uh, potentially throw them in chat. I can take them and do some research. Um, but yeah, more to come. Awesome, thank you very much. Straight for us, appreciate that. Yeah, this was my first time doing this. So just stretching outside my comfort zone. I'm definitely looking forward to being back out here. All right, well, that doesn't, no questions. Uh, thank you folks very much. And again, um, thank you again. Um, again, reach out to us at uh, GitHub Sales. Uh, you can do the contact sales. It's in the lower left hand corner here. Um, you'll, you'll have the pleasure of uh, chatting with someone such as myself, uh, Kevin, Corey, um, and I, there's uh, countless people that have been on here, um, as well as our wonderful product team. Uh, talk soon. Thanks all. Bye.